Good morning. <laughs> you really may not recognize me because I'm not wearing glasses. I have some good news. I had cataract surgery on my left eye and on my right eye. And now I have perfect vision at a distance. So I no longer need glasses. Of course, when I'm reading, I need glasses. I need reading glasses. When you get a replacement for your eye lens in cataract surgery, that lens is, has a fixed focal point. <laughs> I couldn't think of the name. A fixed focal point which is far away. That's why you can see at a distance. But that focal distance cannot change. It's fixed. If you have a living lens, then the focal distance of your lens can change. It can become small when you read and large when you look at a distance. So I don't have that luxury, but I now have the luxury that at distance I don't have to wear glasses. I really miss them. <laughs> okay. A few words about the what I call difficult high school problem. It all comes down, just like the previous problem, to a proper understanding of F equals MA and of free body diagrams. That's all there is to it. That, that's why it's still a high school problem. Many of you do not fully appreciate what a free body diagram is. By the way, up to today, which is, uh, which is four days be before I'm going to post the solutions, make them public, about 25% of the answers are correct. That still leaves 75% <laughs> which are not correct. Some of them don't even have the right dimension. They don't even have the dimension of a force. Okay. Take the small box, little m, on the right side. Free body diagram on that small box. All forces in vertical direction you can ignore because everything, the whole motion, is in the horizontal direction. In the vertical direction, there would be a force down mg and there would be a normal force upwards, also mg. So they cancel. So forget the vertical direction. So what now is a free body diagram of that little box on the right side? Tension is to the left and friction is to the right. Okay? Let's call a force in the right direction positive. Then for that little box, the frictional force minus the tension equals MA, M being the small m. If you do that for all four objects, which is only one way of doing it, if you do it correctly, you really understand what a free body diagram is, you will end up with four equations with five unknowns. Not with four, but with five unknowns. And so one of the key issues, which is at the heart of this problem, is what is this fifth equation that you need? 
If I told you that, of course, then I would give the whole problem away. But if you read the problem carefully, you may be able to find that fifth equation. Because I state, what is the largest possible value of f at which none of the objects, the little m's on top of the large m's, will start to slide. Okay, I can't go any further now. Think about free body diagrams. The answers will just fall in your lap. Okay. Have a nice day, take care, and yeah, let's try to be friends anyhow. <laughs> Bye.